Ontario Fishing Guide for 2022. Let's get started. What is up guys, Northern Rights here. Today we're doing a video a video about a fishing guide and it's all based around Ontario, so yeah. Let's get started. So you live in Ontario, doesn't matter where, the southern part, northern part, east or west part. In this video we are going to show you and some spots that you should find one of the locations helpful and accessible. We're going to be talking about regular fishing in short form, rod and a reel action, fly fishing for trout and even salmon fish and more. So let's get into it. Let's start with the basics when we just find out about fishing. But it can get challenging after all too. Depending on the species you're targeting, we have a rod and reel. So let's just say you just got a rod and reel fishing rod and are just dipping your toes into the sport. But you do not know any places around you. Or just do not know how and on what to catch the species on. Well, you have come to the right spot because that is all we are going to be explaining in this section. So of course, we know you're just a newbie and do not know what species to target or that is the easiest. The number one thing is we would recommend is to just try the simple plain old bobber and worm fishing. Sure, you may not stand out like your other fishing buddies with all of the fancy gear, spoons and a bunch of walleyes in the cooler with trout, but at the same time you can get very lucky and catch your first PB bass. So let's just say you started. If you think about it, almost every species of fish can bite a worm. It's just that it's more rare to catch a bigger species on a fish on a worm. And you would have to get lucky. So if you are doing that, it's more rare to catch a bigger fish on a worm. You would have to get lucky. So if you are doing that, you, you would likely, if not 100%, catch some sunfish bluegill and maybe some crappie if you're lucky during the season so the most popular species that you will catch with a bobber and worm would be panfish of course and bass too because i because i and a couple of my buddies have caught big pb basses on worm Psst. i have a video on that check it out of me catching pb bass on worms with my dad so now okay you figured out what to use for the first time and what fish to target or at least try to catch but you do not know where to go now we will tell you some places you can try out first and foremost you'll have to try you will of course check if you are anywhere near these places but if you live in Ontario one of these places should be easy to access so for number one we have to say Mitchell Lake this lake is awesome for panfish a ton of crappies and bass including largemouth bass and smallmouths even some white bass recorded a month ago and even walleyes deeper in the water so if you're trying to target one of those fish species, then we would recommend you to try out this lake. You can just simply park your car in the parking lot and fish from shore with worms. Fly fishing. FYI, there are lots of rock bass near the shore. So you should catch a ton of them if you're willing to. Yep. You can also access the lake with a boat depending on what fish you are trying to locate. Number two. Okay, so that was one of the best lakes to fish with a bobber and worm from my experience. Now, of course, you can catch anywhere else with a bobber and worm. It's just this spot was the most I had luck with. Now moving on to fly fishing. You can be a little new to this, just like me. Or you can be an absolute pro and know everything. 
But in that case, you would not be watching this video. Regardless, if you are fly fishing, you are likely trying to target rainbows, brones, the rare bookies, or even bass. You came to the right place because I will be telling you some secret places I know that most people cannot find in Ontario when fishing. So first, we got White Man's Creek. This creek is very good because you are most likely isolated from all the people. Well, unless you go to the main part, of course. This tiny but long creek carries a bunch of different species. According to Fishbrain, it carries rainbow trout, brown trout, brookies, and some PB smallmouths, eh? So this spot is heaven. Mo mostly no people. If there are, they are very chill most of the time. There are lots of trout that will be, that will bite a lot, but most likely in trout opener. But they bite all season too. They go mostly at flies, dry flies, and nymphs are what I recommend. But others work too. Hey, I've even seen people catch them on catch big browns on a bobber and a worm. It's just kind of rare to to for that to happen, especially if you're trying to target big big ones. Also, spinners are really awesome. Just try not to get big ones because the fish get spooked, mo mostly the trout. You are going to fish with a spoon. You are likely not going to catch anything unless there are huge rainbow trout lurking in the deep areas or a PB bass. Also, for your information, you can use barbless hooks. You have to use barbless hooks only because it it can damage the fish like the trout because they are very sensitive. Number two, we got Upper Crater River. River, river, river. You will likely almost get as lucky as White Man's Creek, but not exactly. It has the same species just like in White Man's Creek, if not more, I heard. There are some salmon too currently but this river carries mostly trout it is also w it also works great for dry flies or any other but not worms in this river it's also a little more populated than than white man's creek but it still has some good spots where we can find and you could fish with your buddies or family members. The only downside is yeah, you need to hike up the river a lot. Okay, so next, we go fishing for salmon. Oh boy. We would highly recommend first off to floss for the salmon. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, sal slash northern rides. I thought that is illegal. No, flossing is legal in Ontario. It's almost like snagging. But you use bait to catch it, and you hook it in the mouth, which is flossing. Unlike snagging, snagging is when you use nothing or try or hook it in the back or any other part besides the mouth. But we would not recommend in these rivers because you are likely not going to catch much if you're trying to use bait. Honestly, it just depends on your goal too. So now you choose what to do, floss, regular fishing, or even snagging, which we would not recommend if you get caught. The places I am going to tell you in this video should let you do all of the above. So we get first Bonno Creek. The whole thing is filled with salmon starting early August to September, which is currently now. There are Chinooks, Cohos, or even Atlantics, but you cannot keep atlantics if you do you and you get caught it won't be funny you decide this place is surprising ice isolated in most parts but some parts are very 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 packed number two we got port hop port hope now a disclaimer if you have a problem with very very popular spots and filled with people almost 24 we would not recommend this spot this spot at all it's because every time it's packed on friday nights <laughs> but if you don't care about that 
then we would recommend this spot because there are more fish than people and it's always bites 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 you don't even have to floss or snag but if you floss the whole river is yours bud so that's it for this fishing guide if you guys want more leave in the comments below i'll be doing more and yeah catch you guys in the next one take care